following is a class on the Bhagavad Gita as it is. Fourth chapter, text number 28, given by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, recorded on the 11th of April, 1974, in Bombay, India. for the benefit of others. This is also yajna, but they are called karmakanda yajna, primitive activities. By such performance of yajna, one can elevate his material position. Just like feeding the poor, it is also yajna. But the same thing, if it is dovetail in Krishna consciousness, that becomes perfect. People are very much inclined to feed the poor with some just food, but it can be done in a little different way that the full stop offered to Vishnu, uh, prasada, that distribution food stuff is better than ordinary distribution of food stuff. Ordinarily, that is punna, pious activities, but when it is in connection with Krishna, this is called yoga, darva yoga, to distribute food and cloth. That is called durbha yoga. But yoga can be said when it is done, dovetailing the activities with Krishna consciousness. That is yoga. Yoga means Vishnu. Yajnyārtha karma, karma natra lūkayam karma manna. So our Krishna consciousness movement, we are also distributing food in our about one hundred branches all over the world, but not direct, but through Nirbandi Krishna Sambandi Yukta Vairagamucha. If we simply act piously, that is good, but it is not perfect. Suppose I execute many pious activities in my life, then Due to my pious activities, I will get birth in good family, janma isadya sutta sri. I may get my birth in good family, high family, that is called janma. Then isadya, opulence, 
wealth, Sri, beautiful body, and education also. I have several times explained that to become highly educated, that is also due to previous pious activities. To be highly rich, that is also due to previous pious activities. But Narottamdasu Thakur says that karma kāṇḍa, jñāna kāṇḍa, sakali viṣer bhāṇḍa. Karma kāṇḍa vichā, fruitive activities, for getting better position of life, I get my birth in a good family. There is still risk of degradation, because sometimes we get our births in this family, and due to opulence we are associated with bad company. Then we begin to act sinfully. That means again degradation. Therefore the Vaishnava philosophy does not very much approve uh, impious activities. What to speak of impious activities, they do not approve pious activities also. They are simply our practitioner consciousness, simply interested in the service of Krishna. That is their yoga. Because the Bhagavad Gita it is said that those who are engaged in devotional service, to hear devotional service are explained several times, to hear about Krishna. Simply by hearing Krishna, if we simply try to understand Krishna, that is also better than durbhamaya yoga, durbha in charity. But because we cannot devote ourselves, pure devotional service means savanam kirtanam, just like Haridas Thakur. You are simply engaged in savanam kirtanam. You are chanting three hundred thousand times, Hare Krishna Mahaman. We cannot imitate that. That is not possible. But pure devotional service is like that. Just like our Goswamis, the six Goswamis in Vrindavan, how they executed devotional service is described by Srinivas Acharya. Krishna kirtana gana nartana paro prema mritam nidhi dhira dhira jana priyo priya karo nirmasaro pujito Sri Chaitanya kripa bharo bhuvi bhuvo bhara bhantarako bande rupa sanatana ragajuga Sri Jeeva Gopal Krishna kirtana gana nartana paro They always engage them in chanting Hare Krishna Mahamantra, Utkirtana, very loudly. Krishna Utkirtana, Utkirtana. Krishna Utkirtana Gana, Nartana Paro, dancing also. It's like here yes, the boys, they're chanting and dancing. This is very good. Following the footsteps of the Bhushamis, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he was also engaged in chanting and dancing. His dancing description is there in the Chaitanya Chaitamrita during the Rathajatra festival. So chanting, dancing, chanting of the holy name, and in ecstasy dancing, that is also yoga. That is the most perfectional yoga. Yagyai saṅkītanai prāyu. This is called saṅkītana, yoga. Bhavi militya gayanti iti saṅkīrtana. Saṅkīrtana means when we combine together many persons and chant and dance. That is called saṅkīrtana yagya. So those who are engaged in the saṅkīrtana yagya, they are also performing yagya. That is better than drabhamaya yagya. And drabha yagya, drabha yagya, charity, but suppose one man has no money, then his life is spoiled. No. In any condition we can execute this yoga, Sankirtan yoga. 
There is no need of money. Ahi to ki apriti hata. The Sankirtan Yoga is so nice that it cannot be checked by any material condition. If one is interested, he can perform Sankirtan Yoga or the Bhakti Yoga system, Sramanam Kirtanam, in any condition of life. In the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, there is a story, not story, fact, it is described there, that one Brahmin, he was a great devotee, he wanted to offer very brilliant service or chant in the temple worship, but he had no money. But someday he was sitting in a Bhagavad class and he heard that Krishna can be worshipped even within the mind. So he took this opportunity because he was thinking since a long time how to worship Krishna very gorgeously, but he had no money. So he, when he got this point that one can be worshipped Krishna within the mind, so after taking bath in the Gudavari river, he was sitting underneath the tree, and within his mind he was constructing very gorgeous singhasan throne, bedecked with jewels, and keeping the deity on the throne. He was bathing the deity with water of Ganges, Jamuna, Gudavari, Narmada, Kaveri. Then he was dressing the deity very nicely, then offering worship with flower, garland. Then he was cooking very nicely, and he was cooking parvana, sweet rice. So he wanted to taste it, whether it is very hot, because parvana is taken cold. Parmanna is not taken very hot. So he put his finger on the parmanna, and his finger burned out. Then his meditation broken, because there was nothing he was simply within the mind he was doing everything. So, but he saw that his finger is burned. So he was astonished. In this way, Narayan from Vaikuntha, he was smiling. The Lakshmiji asked, why you are smiling? Then one of my devotees is worshipping like this, so send my men to bring him immediately to Vaikuntha. So the Bhakti Yoga is so nice that even if you have no means to offer the deity, God just worship, you can do it within the mind. That is also possible. Therefore it is said that ahoituki apratihata, in any position of life, you can engage yourself in bhakti yoga system. Samaram kirtanam vishnu smaranam pada sevanam. But the prime or the top of perfection of bhakti yoga is samaram kirtanam. Samaram kirtanam, fully absorbed in the thought of Krishna. That is recommended in the Bhagavad Gita also. Yogi-nāma-pi sarvi-sāma madhugata-antara. This is the simplest path. You have to practice always thinking of Krishna. Krishna says, manvanā-bhava-madh-bhakta madhjāji māgh-namaskur. Madhjāji. Now suppose if you have nothing to offer, still you can, manvanā, by thinking of Krishna, by thinking of all materials for worshipping, adjusting them, sitting in one place, you can go on. That is called manmana, thinking, thinking of. You can offer Krishna as I described. So many things. But Krishna wants to see how much you are devoted to Him. Drubba yoga Krishna is not hungry that you have to offer something very nice food stuff. That is, you must do that. But if you have no such thing in position, you can do it within the mind. But not that 
you have got everything to offer. You can offer Krishna very nice food stuff. In that case, if you think that I can do it in mind, that is cheating. That will not be done. But in case you have nothing to offer materially, but still you can offer within the mind. That is called bitta sattva. Actually, we have seen in many places a rich man has got deity. The other day, oh, he went to a place. The deity is there, but it is not worship. Deity is not offered anything. Uh, that is not good. That man is very rich man. According to his position, one must offer, prepare food star, distribute prasadam. Not that generally the impersonalists, they should do so. There are many big, big temples, big, big deities, but the deity is offered little elachidana. That is not good. If you establish deity, you must worship to the best capacity of your possession. That is deity worship. But if one hasn't got to offer anything, he can offer everything within the mind. This facility is there. That way it is aprati-hata. It cannot be checked, aprati-hata, because bhakti can be executed practically also within the mind. It cannot be checked. But if you have got something to offer to Krishna, I don't think, then I shall offer in my mind. That is, Krishna is also very intelligent. That is cheating me. Krishna wants how much you are sacrificing in devotion. Bhaktya. Krishna is not after your goods. That is explained in the Bhagavad. Tadaham bhaktya purihitam asnami. Patram puspam palantayam. Krishna is prepared to accept from you even a little leaf, patram, even a little flower, patram puspam phalo, a little fruit. Anyone can secure this. Even if you cannot secure, if you are so poor or unable, you can offer Krishna everything within the mind. But if you are in possession, then that will not be successful. Then it will be cheating. That is called mitta-sat. According to one's means, jīja thāmāṅ prabhu, according to one's position, they should worship Krishna, maybe without any drabha or with drabha. Jagya is perfect. Drabha jagya, sapu jagya, the sadhaya. The Goswamis, they also used to perform sadhaya jagya. That is also mentioned. Nana shastra vichara naiko nipuno sadhanma samasthapako. They were studying all Vedic literature. All Vedic literature. That is called sadhaya. Sadhaya jagya. To read Vedic literature, to understand Vedic literature, to act according to the direction of the Vedic This is called Sadhaya Yagya. Sadhaya Yagya, Jnana Yagya. By reading Vedic literature, you enlighten yourself with knowledge. So this is also Yagya. There, there are so many. Krishna is available in so many ways according to your position. It is not that he is conditioned. He is not conditioned. That's what it is called. Ahitukhi apratihata. The sadhaya yoga. The Goswamis, they were not only dancing and chanting. That was also part of their business. Krishna kirtana gana nartana paro. But they were also good scholars. Nana shastra vichara naiku nipuno. Saddharma shasthapaku. Just like in our Krishna consciousness movement, we are trying to publish our books in different languages. Already we have got in European and American, English, French, German, Spanish, Swedish, uh, Japanese, Chinese. This is required. Nana Shastra Vichara Naikunipuno. Saddharma, because People are misled. So they should be given the opportunity to study, to understand what is God consciousness, what is Krishna consciousness. So through the Shastras, 
That is also required. Nana Shastra Vichara Naika Nipno Shadha. The Goswami is practically demonstrated in their life. Everything. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taught them. They were the first disciples of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Rupa Goswami was given lesson for ten days continually at Allahabad, Prayat, Dasasamit Ghat. As a result of his instruction, he first wrote this Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, which we have translated into English, Nectar of Devotion. Similarly, Sanatana Goswami was given instruction for two months at Banaras, Baranasi. So, bhakti is not that it is something sentiment without any basic principle of knowledge. No. It is fully based on Vedic knowledge. Bhakta sruta grihitaya. Sruta. Sruta means Veda. Bhakti, after studying the Vedic knowledge, that is perfect bhakti. Vedanta sutra. Therefore, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he talked on Vedanta Sutra at Vinaras because the Mahavadi sannyasis, they were criticizing Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that he is a sentimental sannyasi, devotee. He does not study Vedanta Sutra. The Lord was criticized like that. So some of his devotees requested that we know that you do not mix with the Mahavadi sannyasis. But they are criticizing it. If you kindly meet them. So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu met all the Bena yeah, Baranasi, Mahavadi Sannyasis, Prakashananda Saraswati. He had sixty thousand disciples. So they asked, the Prakashananda Saraswati asked Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that you are a sannyasi, so you do not study Vedanta Sutra. Uh, it is the how of the sannyasis that they must. Vedanta Sutra is the crucial point of sampradaya. One sampradaya must give his commentation on the Vedanta Sutra. Otherwise, he is not a bona fide sampradaya. So, especially in the Sankar sampradaya, they are very much fond of studying Sankar philosophy and Vedanta Sutra. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he went to Varanasi, he was simply dancing and chanting Hare Krishna Mantra. So people began to criticize, not people, the Sannyasi Sampradaya. So his devotees, they became a little sorry that our Lord is being criticized. Therefore he accepted their invitation. And there was Vedanta talk with Prakashananda Saraswati and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu became victorious and they become all disciples. These are statements in the Chaitanya Chiritamrita. So it is not that those who are bhaktas, they, that is also complete, chanting and dancing Krishna, Krishna Kirtana Gana Nathapna. That is a direct process. But if somebody wants to understand this Krishna consciousness philosophy through Vedanta philosophy, through Upanishad, so they are prepared. They are prepared. Therefore, we are publishing so many books. We are discussing Vedanta philosophy, Upanishad, all the Vedic literature. The Srimad Bhagavatam is the essence of all Vedic literature. It is stated, nigama kalpatar or galitam phalamidam. Nigama, nigama means Vedic literature. Kalpataru. Kalpataru means desire tree. We have got experience. From the mango tree we get mango. And from coconut tree we get coconut. But desire tree means whatever you want you can get. Even you can get puris and halwa from the tree. That is called desire tree. So the Vedic literature is called Nigama Kalpataram, Nigama, Vedic literature, desire, Kalpataru. In the Vedic literature, every knowledge is there. Veda means knowledge, perfect knowledge, either material or spiritual. 
The Vedas are there for the benefit of the human society because the living entity has come here in this material world to enjoy. So direction is there. All right, you have come here to enjoy. So enjoy materially under direction. Then gradually you become spiritual and then take liberation. That is the purpose. Karma kanda, jnana kanda, jnana kanda is the path of liberation, then upasana kanda. So it is not that devotees are sentimental. It is not that. Bhakta sruta grihitaya. Bhakti, devotional service, after complete Vedic literature, understanding. But bhakti is so nice thing that if one takes to bhakti directly, he understands Vedic person automatically. Vāsudeva bhagavati bhakti yoga purejita janayati āsū vairāgyam jñānaṁca jadhaitra. This is Krishna's mercy. Even one is illiterate, if he sincerely takes to bhakti yoga. So the Vedic philosophical conclusion automatically awakens. Jasyadeva parābhakti jathādeva tathāguro tasyaite kudita jarta prakāsanti mahāpana. These are the statements are actually. Just like these boys. These boys, they are not educated in Vedic literature. Never. But how they are taken to this Krishna consciousness. This is the magic of Krishna consciousness. It is not dependent on studying of Vedas. But if you take seriously to Krishna consciousness, the Vedic knowledge is automatically awakened. Jasya Devi para bhakti. Jatha Devi Tatha Guru Tashaite Hi Kotitha Artha Prakashanti. This is the secret. If one has unflinching faith in Krishna, an unflinching faith is spiritual master, then automatically the Vedic knowledge becomes awake. This is a fact you can see. They never knew what is Vedic life, Vedic knowledge, but how they have become so nice, perfect devotee. That unflinching faith, that is required. Vishase milaya vastu, tarke bhogu. And that vishas, that is explained. Vishas, faith. In the Chaitanya Chaitam, vishas sabde, vishas sudira nishcha. Krishna bhakti kaile sarva karma krita. Suddha sabde, vishas sudira nishcha. This is statement of Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami. He said, Sadha, because to become a devotee, the begin is sadha, faith. Just like you all, ladies and gentlemen, you are coming. It is the sadha. Let us hear something. What they are speaking about Krishna. This is the beginning. So this sadha, as it grows and becomes firmly fixed up, that is devotion. Sadha means. Devotion means gradually making this sraddha more and more fixed up. Adho sadhya, adho sadhya tato sadhu sangha. First of all sadhya, faith, then association with the devotees. Tato vajana kriya atha anartha nivitti syad, tato nishtha tato ruchi tatha shakti, tato bhava, bhava. So we have to come to the stage of bhāva, buddha bhāva samannita. Krishna says, aham sarvasya prabhava matta sarvam prabhattu iti matya bhajante maang buddha bhāva samannita. So this bhāva, the ecstatic stage of devotional service, one has to reach, that is the perfection or that the priority stage of love of God is. So these things are recommended. Krishna is personally explaining why should we not take advantage of these things. Why we are neglecting. It is suicidal. The Supreme Personality of Godhead is personally instructing how to become Krishna conscious, how to become perfect in Krishna consciousness. And then taktādi haṁ punarjana, then you can go back to home, back to Godhead. Why we should 
not take advantage of this opportunity. This is not very good. We should take advantage. We have got this human form of body. We have got intelligence and the statement and explanation is being given by the Supreme Personality of Godhead personally why you should not take an advantage. This is suicidal policy. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna.